Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at constructing and writing a hypothesis. And in the experimental process, constructing a testable hypothesis is critical. Let's go. First step is to know our variables. Firstly, our independent variable, sometimes known as our experimental variable, is the one thing that we can change during our, during our experiment. And that what, that's what makes it a fair test, the fact that we're only changing one thing. Secondly, our dependent variable, sometimes known as our measured variable, and this is the variable that we're going to measure during the experiment. And it's good to think of this one as something that has units attached to it, whether it's centimetres or grams, um, so that we, we know we're actually measuring it. When we're constructing our hypothesis, we, we need to make a prediction of what we're expecting to find in the experiment. And it's not just a guess what we might find, but an educated guess based on our knowledge, based on our previous experiments or, or things that we know. We need to write it in terms of both our independent and dependent variables. And as we've said, it needs to be something that can be tested. We always need to state what you're changing and what you're measuring. And these are our independent and dependent variables. Sometimes we call that an if and then statement, but it also could be a when and then statement. When we do this, then this will happen. If we do this, then this will happen. So when we write our statement, as we change the independent variable, the dependent variable will change. When we write those changes, it's very important to talk about them in terms of direction. As the independent variable is increased, the dependent variable decreased. So it has a bit more accuracy to it. Let's go through a few examples. Firstly, if we're going to water some plants, we might expect that they would grow. So, when plants are watered, when they're watered more, they will grow taller. Okay? The independent variable, watering the plants compared to not watering them, and they will grow taller. Something we can measure in centimetres. The dependent variable. This is another example with, with yeast. Um, as glucose concentration increases, the rate of respiration in the yeast will increase, producing more carbon dioxide. The glucose concentration, we'd have some with different levels of glucose, is a thing that we're going to change. And the thing that we're measuring is that carbon dioxide, the dependent variable. Next example, a wooden surface will grow more bacteria than a plastic or glass surfaces. Okay. The wooden surface and the types of surface is a thing that we're changing. The amount of bacteria, or you might measure bacteria colonies, is a thing that we're me measuring. Final example here, when the temperature is increased, it will increase the reaction rate producing more oxygen. The independent variable, the temperature, and as it increases, we're being directional, it will increase the reaction rate producing more oxygen. So we're expecting the reaction rate to, to increase, but the thing that we're going to measure is the amount of oxygen. And we'll notice in each, each of those examples, both the independent and dependent variables. So the really critical step is to know your variables and include them in your hypothesis. Good luck hypothesizing.